and thanks for joining me, the Scale Model Geek, for yet another build. This time around, I thought I might make the two main characters from Love and Thunder, Thor and Lady Thor. As you can see, there's quite a number amount of parts in there, and the two kits from this particular build uh, come from two different sources. We have Thor that comes from the Avengers movie Endgame, and you can see his outfit is basically just black apart from his arms and his cape. And Lady Thor comes from the comic books. And with her, there's a lot more colour within her outfit. So we've got a bit of red for the cape and a bit of leather there. And the skirt. The detail in this print is just absolutely wonderful. So much detail in the helmet. And I've got a couple of faces here that I can choose from. One with a helmet, one without. I will paint off both heads just so I've got uh, a choice a bit later on down the road. And of course there's the Stormbreaker there. One very, very big axe. I'm so glad the original sculpt actually had the axe in two parts. It really fits into the hand very nicely. And my biggest nightmare, capes. Oh, I hate doing capes. But here we are, so we're going to have to get started. And it's time to get started into the preparation. I'm just using 800 grit sandpaper here on this little um, sanding board. And I'm using the wet sanding technique. That gets rid of the dust. It also gives it a really nice finish to it. There's quite a few parts to do, so that's going to take me a little while. And in the facial areas, I'm doing it very carefully. Make sure I don't lose any of the um, eyebrows or any of the details. You can see it's come up really nice. A bit shiny with all the water over it, but it is nice. Now I printed the cape straight onto the build plate, so I did get a bit of a lip to it. So it takes a bit of sand and a bit of filing to get it all nice and smooth. There's some really nice detail in Lady Thor's skirt. But the problem was, when I was pulling off the supports, I cracked a tiny bit off the side here. Now to fix it, I've just put a bit of masking tape on the back of it. A couple of dobs of resin and the old UV torch. And the great thing about it is I'll need a minimal amount of sanding as well. The less work, the better, especially when it comes to sanding. I also smoothed out some of the dodgy areas on the cape. And just filing down the pins now so I can get the joints to actually, or rather the parts to join properly. And this, this was a bit of an issue, so I ended up having to actually just cut off that pin. And by doing so, it actually joined a lot better. There was hardly a gap there. And a bit of sub glue. The cheap stuff that I buy at Bunnings. Glue it into place. And then a bit of resin as well to hide the gap there. And again, minimal amount of sanding will be needed. Now during the process of actually pulling off the build plate, I cracked the actual cape a bit. So again, a bit of super glue fixes up that problem. And off camera, I actually joined the two main pieces together. Now what I'm doing here is adding a bit of masking tape to one side, so when I add resin on the opposite side, it doesn't actually leak through. Now using the bare minimum amount of resin on there, it really cuts down the amount of work that I need to do a bit later on. You can see it's looking really, really good. It won't take much to get that up looking really nice. Bit more grinding to make sure the couple parts fit. This is the torso, or rather the waist, sorry. Bit of super glue. And I'm gluing that to the skirt, which is basically her hips. Sorta. Of. I ended up taking off that top pin from the legs because uh, I couldn't get it up into the skirt properly. So once removing that, it, it just made a big difference. Now onto the paint. I decided to use this metallic black onto the legs and the arms uh, just to get that uh, sort of like a latex feel to it. At the moment, it's a bit too metallic -y, so I kind of need to knock that back a bit.
And the way I do that is giving a light dusting of this black. Now to the actual skirt, which is this beastie brown. I'm just using the comic book uh, images as references for the colors. They're not perfect, but they're very, very close. And to dry brush the actual skirt and the legs, I'm using this uh, earth color. I'm a big fan of dry brushing. I really enjoy this part of the process. It really makes all the parts pop once you add the highlights to this. And in some areas, I'm just adding some of this dark sand from Ammo. And for the black latex areas, I'm using this Panzer Grey as a dry brush as well. And you can see it's really feeling like latex. It's almost a satin finish to it. Now the Tamiya X10, this is the gun metal, and this will be my base coat for all the armor. Look at that detail, such amazing work from the original sculptor. And I'm using a combination of this saddle brown and the black for all the straps. And this is where I also realized that the actual waistband, or rather her belt, is a different color. It wasn't the same color as the skirt. So I had to redo those areas. And of course the mighty hammer. I'm using this red from Vallejo. Now with the colors, I tend to do uh, blocks of colors before I do any type of detailing to them. So if I need to touch them up, if I go over the lines or something like that, I can do that before I actually finish them off. I actually really like this red. I'm using the Saddle Brown and the Signy White to give me a lighter shade for the dry brushing of the straps. And back to the gun metal for those discs, which are also on her belt. And also the buckles. Here I'm just adding scratches to the actual straps, just to show a bit more wear and tear. I'm using this vermilion colour for the dry brushing of the red cape. I'm really liking the finishing look of this uh, cape. It's coming up great. Now a combination of this basic skin and also the burnt red for the skin areas. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Hit the notifications button as well as the like button and share. While I was painting the skin, I was looking at the color and thinking, it looks a bit too pinky. So I kind of thought, oh, what I might do is kind of leave it after I finish it and have a bit of a think about it while it dries. And now it's time to dry brush those uh, armor areas with this light metal. And look at that detail all of a sudden come to life. I love working with metal paints. Seriously, how good does that look? It's coming up great.
and for breastplate nice heavy coat of the dry brush Now I'm going to use some of this Tamiya panel line accent color. This particular one is black and I'm just running it in the recessed areas of the armor. It just adds a bit more depth to it. And really brings out some more of the detail. Now I'm using this Araldite, our two-part epoxy glue. And I'm going to use this to actually glue all the parts together. Bit of a tight fit, but it went in nicely in the end. And for a chest and uh, waist uh, joint, I did have to hold it for about five minutes. And she's almost there. Looking good. Soup glue for the legs. And on to the face, and uh, I did change my mind about the original colour. So in this particular case, I've decided to mix up some uh, beige red, white, burnt red and black. And just some using a combination of those colours to give her the different tones on her face. Here I'm just adding some highlights on the top of her nose, as well as her nostrils. Along the cheekbones as well. And some black dots for her eyes. And you can see some lippy there as well. And not forgetting to do the second head. For the base colour of her hair, I'm using this Vallejo Brown Sand. And I'm making sure I get a nice even coverage. And to dry brush the hair, I use this Dark Sand from Ammo. Now this will be the first of my dry brushing. Then I hit it with this light sand. And just certain little areas, not complete hair, just the really tip of the braids and things like that. Now with the head done and glued to the body, it's time to move on to Thor. Like I mentioned earlier, sadly, Thor doesn't have much colour in him. He's effectively all black. Now Thor's sleeves have the same latex look as uh, Lady Thor. So I've hit it with this uh, black metallic paint. And then I'll hit it with a light dusting of the black. Now onto the dry brushing as I did with Lady Thor. This pan's a grey. Now to break up a bit of that black, I've decided to use some of the metallic black on the insides of his legs. Now the pattern on the inside of his legs looks very similar to Thor's sleeves. So it's a good little match. Now can someone please leave a comment and let me know what these discs actually do, if they do anything? They could be just decorative. But they're weird. I painted those with the gun metal. And I also added some gun metal as detail to his wristbands. And his boots. They look good. I like them. Yeah, that stuff. I also used it as the base colour for the axe. 
Make sure I got underneath all the branches. Now I'm using this wood grain colour for the wood grain. I should really like the way this is coming up. Good choice. Now the light metal to actually dry brush that axe. That is one very mean looking axe. And for the skin I'm using exactly the same colours and uh, technique as I did for Lady Thor. Except for the lippy. I feel I did a better job on actual Thor than I did Lady Thor. Still a lot to learn regarding um, doing female faces I guess. And after painting the eyes, I'm just shaping them with the original flesh tones. Adding a bit of uh, darker tones to the inside of the eyes. And since Thor has the same colour of hair as uh, Lady Thor, same paint job. My only criticism of this sculpt would be the hair seems to be lacking a bit detail. And with Thor all painted up, time to assemble him. Now it's the final bit of Thor to do. This is his cape. And I'm painting that with the red. Yes, the same red as Lady Thor's cape. Now during the sanding process, I actually did lose some of the detail in the joint between the two halves. And I had somebody that left a comment on my uh, Moon Knight build. And they suggested I actually do a coat of paint and then dab it with the cloth. And that was Jason Adams. Thanks mate, because it actually worked out really, really well. And now I have some great texture back in the cape. And now that the both figures are done, it's time to create the base and I'm using this XPS foam, which is also known as insulation foam. And I'm just working out the placement where to put the two figures. The original base that came with Lady Thor, she's actually stepping on a rock, so I need to build up a corner of this base just to simulate that pose. And once I'm happy with the height, I'll just glue them into place.
With all the little bits and pieces glued into place, I'm just shaping it with this hot knife and making it look like rocks that are sticking out of the ground. Now this sculpting bit doesn't have to be actually perfect. You just want a rough look, uh, so it looks like rough terrain and, you know, rocks. Because everything will be covered in a grout compound. And just here, I'm actually just melting out some of the bits just to break up the levelness of the surface. Now I did have some sand and grout left over from a previous uh, kitchen renovation and the combination of sand, grey grout, water and some PVA glue and I mixed it all together in this bowl. A quick coat of water first just so um, the grout combination has got something to bite into. As you can see I did the edges first then attack the top of it. And this texture actually came up really well. Left that overnight to dry and then a bit of a coat of this dark flesh tone. But what I'm doing with this is actually spraying on an angle. And you can see the detail straight away pop. It's almost like a dry brushing technique with an airbrush. And I'm hitting the top areas with this beastie brown. Again, just to add a bit more interest to the terrain. And to dry brush the whole thing, I use the earth. Now I just drilled some holes and added some pins and these pins will just help uh, the figures stand up uh, during the process of the glue drying. For this I used the Aerodite two-part epoxy glue once again. And then they are all stuck down. Nice and firmly too. These little bushes I'm adding are normally used by model railway enthusiasts. And they look great. The scale is uh, just spot on. And some grass as well. And I've used tree roots to simulate dead plants. And also some debris over the ground. And look at that, it's all done. I think you've been very patient, so I think it's time to see the hero shots.